What is good YouTube and welcome back to a brand new video before we get into this video though I do want to say obviously want to thank you guys so much for 5,000 subscribers and as promised We're gonna be doing that giveaway that I've been promising for like the whole month I was not expecting to hit 5,000 this fast though I thought it would probably take us the whole month to do it and you guys have surprised me and Honestly, I'm truly blessed and thank you guys so much once again, but how you enter the giveaway There is going to be a link in the description to my second channel just hit that subscribe button, come back to this video, comment done. You'll be in the wheel. I'm going to spin the wheel live either next video or the video after that. Might give it some time for all the people to enter in the giveaway. I'm not sure when I'm going to do it yet, but it's going to be either next video or the video after that. But that's all you have to do. Just uh, click down in the description below, subscribe to my second channel, comment done on this video, and that's it. So other than that, guys, let's go ahead and do this New York Knicks rebuild and of course the winner will get a gift card a $25 gift card of Amazon Xbox or PlayStation whatever they want so I'll be spinning the wheel in a couple of days or so but or maybe even the next video but we'll see but we're doing the New York Knicks new look rebuild today this was what you guys voted for I thought it was only a matter of time before we did this team as we all New York is one of the most popular markets in the NBA but uh, yeah, I mean obviously this team definitely had a disappointing offseason. There is one bright spot though You did sign Julius Randle. Julius Randle is a very good player in my opinion And I think he could come out uh, next year the New York Knicks and almost, you know Basically carry this team quite a bit. You're gonna have Dennis Smith jr. Probably, you know get a little bit better Marcus Morris senior was kind of odd I mean he is 30 years old. So I guess a veteran on the team isn't bad You know that's awesome to have always and then RJ Barrett of course Another guy that's going to be a huge part of this New York Knicks project. And then uh, Mitch Robinson. There's a lot of young players here. Kevin Knox. There's a lot. Like I said, there's a lot of young players here. So um, since the Knicks did not get, you know, anybody significant. And I'm just going to go with the young squad, right? So that's what I'm, we're going to do. We're going to try to build this team with a bunch of young players, which is my uh, initial thought. But Dennis Smith Jr. is the starting point guard right now. RJ Barrett is the starting shooting guard. Kevin Knox is your starting small forward. Randall, Mitch Robinson. Marcus Moore Sr. is coming off the bench. Uh, Bobby Portis at the back of center Taj Gibson at the back of power forward and Alfred Payton as the back of point guard And then what I will do then is probably move um, Marcus Moore senior to small forward now. I think it only makes sense to our oh, wait, Marcus Moore senior is actually gonna jump in the starting spot and Kevin Knox is gonna go ahead and jump into the bench Which I am actually gonna go ahead and give Kevin Knox a little bit more minutes than these veterans because really don't need um, Him getting that many or get, getting these veterans getting that many minutes. So Go ahead and go something like this and i'll give kevin knox about 28 i'm trying to get about 30 and rj barrett of course i want to get like 35 and i'll give dennis smith jr 30 so yeah uh any young players are out of the road alonzo trier dodson so trier is not playing right now and i definitely expect him to frank delakina somebody i expected them to trade but it didn't get done uh bullock also signed a two-year deal so i mean there's quite a bit of players we could trade wayne ellington's here as well so I don't know what their rotation is going to look like exactly. They signed a lot of significant players, and this is, could be the rotation right here. But then you got to see, is Taj Gibson going to play? Obviously, I think Bobby Portis will. Alfred Payton, what about Trier, Ellington, and all those guys? But I don't think Frank will play. I'm going to go ahead and simulate to the end of the season. I'm probably going to stop at the trade deadline and trade Marcus Moore Sr. I think it only makes sense to trade him while you only have him on a one-year deal. Maybe somebody will take him. A playoff contending team will take him off their bench or something. So gonna go ahead and uh see what happens with this new york Knicks team because uh you know the last few times i've done rebuilds for some weird reason this team always makes the playoffs and wins a championship so maybe i don't have to do anything we're at the trade deadline and while the okc thunder are starting their rebuild process i think it only makes sense to make a couple of trades here at the trade deadline even though we are 34 and 19 i really don't expect the knicks to obviously be 34 and 19 in real life but frank nilakina to the thunder could make some sense as the thunder are going to rebuild soon I think Chris Paul will probably be traded in December, so I'm going to do that trade and thank, or send Frank Nilakina off uh, for two second round picks, but the Thunder basically only traded one second round pick because they got one in return. So uh, other than that, Mark Smore Sr. I think makes sense to trade as well. He's on a one-year deal. I, I can't picture him cutting back. Taj Gibson makes sense to trade as well. There's veteran presence in the locker room, but Taj Gibson is on a two-year deal, so we don't necessarily have to rush his trade. But Marcus Moore Sr., I think it only makes sense to trade him to a contending roster right now because 30 years old could definitely help a playoff team right about now. So um, we could give we could give the Blazers Marcus Moore Sr. and they give us Kent Bazemore, who is an expiring. But I will say, in order for this trade to make any sense at all, uh, they the Blazers would have to throw in like a second or a first 
maybe even a first possibly the pelicans uh the pacers want to give me malcolm brogdon uh i'm not trying to go too crazy here i'm trying to be kind of somewhat realistic here just a little bit and then of course this isn't a realistic rebuild by any means it is some, it's going to be somewhat realistic and i might get out of hand sometimes but i'm gonna try for this trade we get ken baseborn we get a second from marcus moore senior they want a 2023 unprotected this is not how it works this is not how it works how about you just give me a uh, another second and we'll do something like that they want kadeem allen they'll give me jalen horde uh kadeem allen's on a you know two-way contract they'll give me jalen horde as well and they'll give me two seconds for marks moore senior i mean i think this trade makes a lot of sense kim bays more uh i'm not sure you know he's not going to be here long obviously he's only on here on one year deal and we get some picks for marks moore senior so like i said it only made sense to make some of those trades and i know they weren't that important to the video but like you guys still feel it's kind of nice to see all the trades i'm making so i'm gonna go ahead and continue this and uh, we'll finish the season off against the detroit pistons at the end of the season like i warned you guys we're in the playoffs because like i said i've been doing these rebuilds uh these new look rebuilds and for some reason the knicks always make the playoffs i don't know what it is but here are the player stats so we can go ahead and see what happens so rj barrett you know had 19.6 points per game and julius randall had 19 as well this is kind of the season I could expect from rj barrett but i definitely expect a lot more from julius randall i think he averaged like 20 and something with the pelicans didn't he pretty sure he did or did am i going crazy maybe he i mean it's not gonna show me in the game let me know if that's correct i'm not sure if it is I, i'm pretty sure it is but oh well anyway here's the player stats let's go ahead and recap that some more dennis Smith jr with 13 and a half kevin knox at 11. i also traded mark Moore senior at the trade deadline to start kevin knox because i wanted to see kevin knox now start to get to uh start on this team because he was not before and then we had about 10 points and 10 rebounds from mitchell robinson dodson with nine and uh there's gonna be a lot more trades coming this offseason but uh let's just see how well we do in these playoffs i guess we're not even really supposed to be here if you ask me the knicks aren't a team that scream playoffs to me when you look at their roster they may surprise some people but i'm not feeling it so we do lose in seven games against the cleveland cavaliers who i don't even think the Cavs will make the playoffs but uh, the Cavaliers and the Celtics, we got Philly and Brooklyn and then Los Angeles and Denver. We got the Lakers um, and the Thunder and then Philly and Boston. The Lakers up 3-0 -0 on the Thunder. See, the Thunder are another team that, you know, if they do keep Chris Paul throughout the whole season, which I highly doubt they'll do, maybe they make the playoffs, but the Western Conference is so good, I still doubt it. It's just this game. It's just 2K, man. That's all. That's all. I mean, that's all you can blame it on. So we're gonna replace this with the 14% lottery rule, of course, and then go to the draft lottery. Uh, I'm not sure if the Mal uh, eh, the Mavericks pick conveys this year or not. Um, and it looks like the Hawks, um, the Mavericks got the number one pick, and then they also, and then the Celt. Do we have a pick? Hawks via Cleveland. And some of these picks may be wrong, guys. It's 2K night or 2K19, right? So whenever we get into 2K20. That's when the picks will be right and then it'll be more accurate but i mean it's kind of hard to have every single draft pick right when this game is a year behind as we're doing these rebuilds right so let's go ahead and see if we can draft somebody here with the 23rd pick overall see who's still available the boston celtics have back-to-back -back picks after me hello whitney is still here we have josh green i'm going to take Khalil whitney out of kentucky and send to the end there and we'll be good there all good lamello ball uh theo maladon looking pretty good uh rookie signing Hello, Whitney. You're going to go ahead and sign him, and I'm going to renounce those two. Player options, Bras Dekes or Dekes, however you say it. I know he's been pretty good in Summer League, I think, although I didn't watch a ton of Summer League, so I might be wrong there. But let's go. All right, we have negative $35 million. I'm expecting to have a little bit more money than just that. Bazemore's contract can go. Patterson can go, of course. Dodson, I wouldn't mind bringing back. Wilkes, I wouldn't mind. I mean, I'm not going to worry about uh, Jalen Horde because he's probably not going to be that important in the video. But uh, Taj Gibson's contract uh, worth $10 million is definitely a buzzkill. I mean, there's a lot of contracts I kind of just want to get rid of this offseason. Alfred Payton, $8 million. Wayne Ellington and Reggie Bullock. I mean, I kind of just want to get rid of both these guys. Flo Whitney is going to be nice. Uh, Taj Gibson's another contract I want to get rid of. Bobby Portis, you know, it's all right. Not a contract I really want, but, you know, it's not killing me. Let's see if we can find a uh, trade for Taj Gibson, though. He's worth $10 million, so... We're gonna have to probably throw in a draft pick in order for a team to take it on realistically but do i want to be realistic is the question we get jeremy grant at the power forward spot we already have julius randall but jeremy grant would be a nice addition off the bench so um you know what i might get you i might get him second round pick 
We're going to go ahead and do this trade. This is where I'm going to start to get a little unrealistic because these are a lot of contracts I want to get rid of. Alfred Payton, uh, Wayne Ellington, and Reggie Bullock. Let's just go ahead and package these two together. Let's get some cap space because I'm ready to uh, start to you know make this team a little bit better if we can. Ellie Okobo from the Suns, and we get a first rounder. I mean, I'm not going to take a second round. I'm not going to rob him of a first rounder, but I'll take Okobo from you. And you give me like a second and we can do that. How about that? There we go. All right. Uh, $14 million. And do we have a trade exception? No. I want to bring back Trier. And we still have Everett Payton's awful contract. So let's go ahead and trade that as well. Bobby Portis is someone I might actually trade as well. There's a lot of players I just want to get rid of. Because, you know, the Knicks did give a lot of these contracts out. And from what I understand, I think what it is is why they did this is because 2021 free agency is supposed to be the best uh, the better free agency of this like better than this one that we're in right now Which makes sense. I'm gonna go ahead and take this guy from the jazz and then we'll call we'll call it good So now we have 20 million dollars could also uh, trade Bobby Portis But I'm not gonna worry about that too much Is there any good free agents we could go ahead and just snag out there that makes sense to bring to this team? Um, we have RJ Barrett. We really don't I mean we have Dennis Smith jr I guess I can't say we don't have a point guard. That's incorrect, but this Smith Jr. at the point guard position right now, R.J. Barrett at the shooting guard, Kevin Knox, Chloe Whitney. So we basically have a young core at every single spot. Do I go ahead and just let them stay there? Or do I trade them? Or do I just go a different route? Do I trade Dennis Smith Jr.? Do I sign a point guard in free agency? I'm not sure. So um, Cousins, Mike Conley, none of these guys are intriguing besides Pascal Siakam. And that's somebody I get quite a bit. I'm going to stick with Julius Randle throughout this video, I think, because that's not someone I get that often. So, yeah, I'm not really seeing anybody I want to snag. I mean, Brandon Ingram wouldn't be bad if he was actually good in 2K. I'm not saying he's bad in real life, but in 2K, he's his con like he's just never performs that well. Malik Beasley wouldn't be a bad player to snag from free agency. Definitely a nice young player. I wouldn't mind. Uh, let me go ahead and actually make his contract offer a little bit better, like, Three years, $30 million, you know, someone who can shoot the three and play defense, you know, that's very valuable in today's league. Although we could just get Trier back and call it good for 11 million a year. Get, well, he wants 11 million a year. Do I want Malik Beasley? I feel like Knicks fans would kill me if I don't sign Trier back though. So uh, do I sign both of them? They're both 6'5", so I can't have both of them. I guess I'll just bring back Trier because I feel like that's the popular decision here. So I'll just bring back uh, Alonzo Trier because I know Knicks fans do like him a lot. So just for you Knicks fans out there that are watching this video, I'll bring back Alonzo Trier. And then we'll sign him. And then uh, do we have anything else we can do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have a nine-man rotation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this play out. We're going to go in the same way to another year where um, not going to be that good. You know, we're not really going for it just yet. I'm going to go with the Knicks plans, entertain the Knicks plans of going all out in 2021 free agency where I can offer a bunch of contracts to a nice uh, a lot of restricted free agents and see if we can snag one from a team that's not willing to match so what i'm going to do is uh just going to give some of these guys some untapped potential seem like the next year and uh we'll just see where we go from there which of the year goes to no other than mr david fisdale in new york madison square garden we went 57 and 25 i barely did anything guys i literally just traded players in like sign did i even sign a single player did i i signed let me see here. Did I sign a single? I traded for Jeremy Grant. I drafted Chloe Whitney, and I tra I traded for Maya y Oni, which I don't know why he's about to make $12 million next year, which is kind of ir irritating, but Yogi Ferrell. I mean, yeah, I really didn't do much of anything, and this roster is just, like, killing it. So, I mean, what else? I mean, I'm just going to leave it. Julius Randle, or RJ Barrett, had 20 and a half points per game and 8 assists. Julius Randle with 19.67 rebounds, and then Dennis Smith Jr. had himself 16 and 6.5 Bobby Porter's with 11, uh, Kevin Knox with 11, and Alonzo Trier with 10.5. Jeremy Grant had 9.3 off the bench as well. So, we are the first seed in the Eastern Conference facing the 35 and 47 Orlando Magic. That is not going to get you in the playoffs in real life. I promise you, no team winning 35 games is making the playoffs. It usually just does not happen. The, you know, the last time I could think of a team like that winning under 40 games making the playoffs was the Brooklyn Nets back in. I want to say 2015, 2016, when they faced the Atlanta Hawks in the first round where Darren Williams was still on Brooklyn. And we're about to get swept, man. Oh, my God. Okay. So, yeah, we still, you know, we have some moves to make, but we did make it to the second round at least. I mean, like I said, this team should not be going 57 and 25. That's just a little too crazy. But like I said, this is the 2021 free agency where I think the Knicks are targeting possibly trying to land 
some other players and uh, hopefully we can do that for him but the 76ers do win the championship let's get to league meetings though and get this show on the road draft lottery uh is this where the mavericks pick kicks in i'm not seeing it i don't see okay so maybe not all right uh staff signing david fizdale i'm gonna go ahead and wait our trainer is actually wait is there a better trainer out there yeah because i only had three camps so i kind of want uh of course two or no, i only had two camps what is what i'm trying to say i'm going to fire my assistant coach i'm gonna go and fire do i fire david fizdale even after a season like that i mean david fizdale do i get mike d'antoni i'm gonna get this guy I get, you know what? I'm gonna get Mike D'Antoni because every time I have Mike D'Antoni, things go well. So I'm gonna sign all those guys and then go to the draft. And uh, let's see, we have the 28th pick, uh, the 11th pick, and this, we have three second round picks. Uh, you know, I'm just gonna go ahead and let the computer draft somebody because I'm not too focused on the draft right now because this is might be our last season, depending on how things go for free agency and everything else. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign all those guys back, of course, bring them all back on their team options. And then now we have qualifying offers, Dennis Smith Jr which I might do a sign and trade with him, depending on how this free agency goes, we'll see. So we have Mr. Guys like Jason Tatum out here, Donovan Mitchell, John Collins, De'Aaron Fox, Laurie Markman, De'Aaron Fox, now somebody I get, or Lonzo, or just any, I might try to snag one of those guys. Uh, Kuzma, cause we already have, uh, Tatum would be nice, Donovan Mitchell and Jason Tatum are, I feel like are just gonna be like quite impossible to get. So I'm not gonna waste my time giving them offers. Darren Fox, though, I feel like that's somebody we might be able to get. Lonzo Ball might be somebody we could get, so I'm going to try it. Uh, is there DeJounte Murray? Do we try for that? Dinwiddie? I mean, I'm hoping to get Lonzo or Darren Fox. So let's see. We got all of them. Jason Tatum, I think, is going to get matched, so I'm not going to waste my time. Darren Fox, so I'm not sure if he'll get matched or not. I'm going to just try for it. And okay, did the Celtics not match? Jason Tatum? Holy crap. Could I have just gotten Jason Tatum and I just... Wow, dude. Wow. DeJounte Murray, though, is looking all right. He's not somebody I get very often. That sucks, man. That really sucks. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, give DeJounte Murray a contract, I guess. Because I wanted Lonzo. I don't want to renounce the right. I'll renounce the rights on Bobby Portis, but... I wanted Lonzo for sure. Or Jason Tatum, man. Holy crap. I didn't think I could get him. So I didn't even try for it, and I could have gotten him, I guess. Is that Kobe White? No, it's Derek White. I was about to say. So we got DeJounte Murray, you know, which should be an interesting fit in New York. You know, San Antonio might move forward with, uh, what's his name, uh, Derek White. So we have DeJounte Murray and uh, RJ Barrett in the backcourt, which, you know, should be nice. El Kobo off the bench. Lonzo Trier off the bench. Uh, Kevin Oxpolo, Whitney is still looking good. Julius Randle and Jeremy Grant. We still have Mitchell Robinson. Do we have any more money in cast? We have six million dollars uh we still have dennis smith juniors uh, or uh what do you call it uh over cap hold i couldn't think of the word for it all right so center thompson do we just do a sign and trade with dennis smith jr i think that's what we do i think that's the move because i mean we just signed what's his name so there's no point of bringing dennis smith jr so i'm gonna give him uh 20 million dollars and i'm gonna do trade him right away to somewhere else that way we can get something for him so uh what do i want for him i'm not sure but Dennis Smith Jr. in a sign-in trade. Let's see what we can get for him. So Dennis Smith Jr., we don't need him anymore. $17 million this first year. DeJounte Murray, I'm going to go. We can get Ben Simmons, dude. Ben freaking Simmons from the Sixers. I'm not going to do it, though. Can't. I just can't. I, don't, I just don't. I mean, I just signed DeJounte Murray, so I really don't want to do that. Uh, we could get Steven Adams. We could even get uh, Jared Allen. Let me try for somebody else, though, and uh, somewhere else. So Joel Embiid. Uh, John Wall, Bradley Beal. I think a center makes the most sense. Carlton Towns would be awesome, but probably highly unlikely. All are highly unlikely. Drummond is someone I get quite a bit, but I always like getting Drummond because I just think he fits so well in everything I want. DeAndre Jordan, Vucevic, Mo Bamba. Uh, you know, Mo Bamba. Actually, this makes so much sense. Mo Bamba for Dennis Smith Jr. This gives the Magic the point guard they need. And we get a young, well, we have Mitchell Robinson's that is it. You know what, actually, you know what I'm going to go for? He's someone I get very often, but I'm, I might just do it again. I might just go for it. Or it could get DeMarcus Cousins, 30 years old. Gus Valanciunas, Montres Harrell, Marcus Saul. Uh, Joel Embiid obviously would be nice, but he's always easy to get. So, Mr. Andre Drummond to complete our center spot, or do we just let Mitchell Robinson roll there? Do we just let Mitchell Robinson roll there? Uh, or do I trade Dennis Smith Jr. just for like some first round picks? Maybe I'll just let Mitchell Robinson roll. Or we could just keep Dennis Smith Jr., I guess. 
I mean, do I want to do that? Not really. Or do I trade for a good starting small forward? Well, guys, that just escalated quickly. So instead of just trading for a small forward, what I did is move RJ Barrett to the shooting guard. So as you guys can see, I just agreed with this trade with the Phoenix Suns. And I want to make sure you guys don't think I just override this because there's some people out there that just want to say, like, you just overrid that. And then here it is. Here it is. It's off. It's off, right? So I couldn't just do that. And here's the transaction. We just had Devin Booker. We just got Devin Booker. I traded Dennis Smith Jr., Chloe Whitney, and Alonzo Trier and two first rounders for Devin freaking Booker. I mean, come on now. That's got to be, that's got to be like one of the best moves I've ever pulled off. Maybe not, but still, I mean, it was a good move. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we need probably a backup point or a backup shooting guard or something. Roberson, Bolt, Bullock, Danny Green, Pat Connington would do. So I'm going to get Pat Connington a one-year deal. And that's going to be the move, guys. So we're going to go ahead and plug in Devin Booker. I did not expect that trade to go through. So that is exactly why I didn't. I wasn't doing it because I, I wasn't doing it live because I was just, you know, kind of messing around and just, wow, they accepted it. I was very shocked they did, but we traded Dennis Smith Jr. to Phoenix for Devin Booker. And I'm hoping Devin Booker uh, fits in nicely here in New York. We can pair him next to RJ Barrett, Julius Randle, DeJounte Murray. We kind of build a super team here in uh, New York. So, I mean, it's it's looking good. It's looking very good here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, load a 2022 draft class just in case we do decide to do one more season. Just in case, you know, 2K decides to eliminate me early, which is always very irritating. I'm glad I didn't get Andre Drummond. I went all in and I got Devin freaking Booker. To pair him next to DeJounte Murray, RJ, that's going to be nice, man. This this has got to be a very good season for us. So hopefully it goes well like I wanted to. But Mitch Robinson, go ahead, go ahead and give him some untapped potential. We're going to give Okobo some untapped potential. We're going to go ahead and give uh, Kevin Knox some as well because I want Kevin Knox to have a big year for us, even though there's not going to be a lot of scoring opportunities for him because now we just got a lot of scores on our roster, which is great to have. Never a bad thing to have. But now I'm in rotation. DeJounte Murray... Devin Booker, RJ Baylor, Julius Randle, Mitch Robinson, Kevin Knox off the bench, Okobo, Jeremy Grant, and Pat Connington. We even have Mr. Jeremy Lin, Lan Sanity himself, back in New York. And we are at a five and a half star or four and a half star rating with um, se seven second system. So without further ado, guys, let's go win that championship. We didn't go no 57 and 25, but we did go 51 and 31, which is good enough for second seed in the Eastern Conference. Devin Booker led the way with 22 points per game. RJ Barrett had 20 himself. And then we had 18.5 from Julius Randle. 12.7 from Kevin Knox. DeJounte Murray had 10.5. So, yeah, looking like, you know, a $20 million for DeJounte Murray averaging 10 points is not looking so good anymore. Uh, that's all right, though. 9.6 from uh, Mitch Rock. I still wonder, what would have happened if I'd gotten Jason Tatum? That would have been amazing. That's something i got to look forward into uh, some other rebuilds. i got to go for him. Because I just, I don't think the Celtics were about to match that. And we're up 1-0 uh, oh on Cleveland, 2-1 uh, on, uh, or 2-1, two, 2-2. Two, two. Can we go up 3-2, please? We do. Can we win a 6? 7-game series, and we win it in 7 games. Now we're facing the Philadelphia 76ers. We could have snagged Ben Simmons from them, but I decided not to and stuck with what we had. And 2-1, uh, 3-1, one, one. please don't lose to the 76ers here, man. I'm going to beat them, man. Let's go ahead and move on. Win a championship. Let's do this thing. 3-1 lead. Blow a 3-1 lead, Philly. Blow a three. All right, guys. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run it back. Same roster, same team, and we're going to win it. We're going to win it this time. Last season, we were positioned once again as the second seed, but this time we're facing the Milwaukee Bucks. We won three less games than last year, but here are the stats. They still look somewhat the same. You know, looking pretty good there. But I'm ready to wrap this up and beat the Milwaukee Bucks in the first round and then move on to the Eastern Conference Finals and to the NBA Finals and then win this championship because I'm tired of not winning a championship. This has been a very good video thus far other than completing the completing the rebuild, basically. And now we're facing the Philadelphia 76ers once again who went 40 and 42. Can we beat them, please? 1-0. 2-0. 3-0. Please go up. 2-1, 2-1. Please go up 3-0. 2-2. Do not do this, 2-K. 2-K. I don't want to walk out again. And we beat them at 6. We are on to the Eastern Conference Finals. So... If nothing else, we at least made it to the Eastern Conference Finals. But we're about to beat the Brooklyn Nets, right? Nope. Okay. Even okay. They're up 2-1. Uh, 3-1. Please don't lose in five. Okay. Let's see if we can come back from 3-1. 
and have uh, the Brooklyn Nets blow a 3-1 lead. And, you know, that doesn't look like it's going to happen. So, yeah, we don't win another championship. What a surprise. What a surprise. I just hit my desk. I just hit my desk. All right, let's go to see who's going to win the championship, man. Ah, this is, this sucks. This sucks, man. Even when I try, I still fail, basically. Basically what we're, you know, summing this up to be. But Kyrie Irving win, wins finals MVP. That's going to be it for me, guys. Make sure you leave a like if you enjoyed the vid. And, of course, subscribe if you haven't already. But this is Crushables, and I'm saying peace.